If you were the victim of a terrorist attack, mass shooting, or in a car accident, could you stop the bleed to save the life of a family member? Let's talk about it. What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. Hey, if it's your first time here, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Bang that little bell icon so you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Car accidents and motorcycle crashes happen every day and more and more around the globe we're experiencing acts of terror and mass shootings. So that begs the question, do you carry first aid in your car, truck, or motorcycle? Now I'm like most of you, I'm not a medical professional. I do have a wife and son that are both trained and experienced army combat medics. I have a sister, aunts, and several cousins who are nurses, paramedics, and EMTs. But none of their medical experience helps me if they're not with me if something happens. If you're the first one on the scene, or even worse, in the actual incident, you are the help until help arrived. Death due to bleeding out can occur in as little as five minutes. Now I've discussed the need for basic first aid in a video I did about mass shootings and how we can save lives which I'll link up here. That video covers a lot of great information from Skinny Medic and Prep Medic, two certified professionals, EMTs, paramedic, that put out a lot of content on YouTube. Now if you carry one of these, it makes sense to get training, to learn how it works, how to carry it, how to practice, and how to be effective with it. With so many mass casualty events going on around the world, I thought it was time to refresh my training, since I haven't had any real medical training since I left the Army, and that was basic combat lifesaver training. Now, earlier this year, I intended to stop the bleed course put on by my employer. Stop the Bleed is a national awareness campaign. Over one million people have learned to stop the bleed by taking a course. You can find more info at stopthebleed.org, where you can find a class Often, they're free. Now that Stop the Bleed training not only refreshed my skills, it prompted me to want to be more prepared. And that prompted me to build this everyday carry ankle rig, and you can watch the video about that right here. Now in this video, I'm gonna discuss what we carry in our vehicles. Unlike carrying on a person where you have limited space, you have a lot more options about what you keep in your car, truck, or even motorcycle. My wife, being a former army medic, could carry a full aid bag because she has the training, knowledge, and experience to administer life-saving measures at a higher level than I can. My kits are based around the Stop the Bleed bleeding control kits because they equal my level. This one I happen to keep in the saddle bag of my motorcycle. I'll drop a link to this in the description below. Now, during the winter time when my bike is stored away, I'll take that kit and put it in my vehicle and that way I have just that much more medical supplies with me in case something happens. Now, if you want to piece together your own kit, you can buy all the parts and pieces individually and put them in a little storage baggie like this. In a Stop the Bleed course, you learn three different techniques to help stop someone from bleeding out. The first is how to use your hands to apply pressure to a wound. The second is how to pack a wound to control the bleeding. And the third is how to correctly apply a tourniquet. These three techniques will empower you to assist an emergency and possibly save a life. Let's take a look at the basic components of this little kit that I put together. Now, since these are for your vehicle, you can modify them to suit your own needs. For example, band-aids and boo-boo ointment. This next one is something I'd completely overlooked in my EDC ankle kit. But thanks to this comment by this user, I now have made the change and added rubber gloves to all my medical kits. I went with blue over black because it shows the blood better when you're trying to sweep the body looking for injuries. Next we have shears for cutting away garments, clothes, jeans, belts, shirts to be able to expose the skin. Next we have gauze for packing wounds and pressure dressing. We also have an ace wrap for covering the wound. And the last piece in this kit, a cat tourniquet. Do not buy your tourniquets on Amazon. There's too many fake knockoffs out there and they fall apart when twisted. I will link in the description below good sources to buy cat tourniquets as well as the soft tee wide that I use in my ankle kit. All the other supplies, no problem buying on Amazon. Do you carry a first aid kit? Have you taken any basic medical classes so you can help out if need be? Draw me a comment down below. I will link the video that Prep Medic did on the Stop the Bleed course down in the description below. That way you can give it a watch. If you have some basic training, this would be a good refresher for you. If not, it might prompt you to go take a Stop the Bleed class. The whole point of this video is to bring awareness to you to go out and get some training and carry some basic medical supplies. You might come across an accident scene and may not have the proper training, but if you have some supplies, somebody else there might have that training and together you could save a life. 
If you like this kind of content, go ahead and click that like button. It helps you to promote this video out to people who might be looking for content like this. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you can do that by clicking this button right here. Once you get done with that, go ahead and watch this video. YouTube thinks you might like it. Until next time, stay safe, keep your head on a swivel.